<laughs> Welcome. Hey, good morning, everyone. Got quite the bird collection going on outside. Particularly the construction noise birds. They're very in season, it seems. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I will try to mute myself here. David, it sounds lovely. And, and I, wish my, I wish my urban noises sounded like that. But the fire trucks just aren't nearly as <laughs> kind or fun. Yeah, you, you miss the, uh, the, the toot toot of the, uh, of the train nearby. It still makes for a fun balance. Hello, everybody. Hello. Good morning from Northern Virginia. Gee, see you. I briefly exchanged chats with Ava this morning. They send their regrets. Um, they're not going to be able to make it today. Uh, we'll wait another minute to see the rest of the tech hopefully show up here. Hello. Hi. So there. Um, so uh, uh, Vicky has posted the uh, the URL. If everyone can add their name, that would be awesome. Thank you. Just wait one more minute before we get going here. Luke, Josh, like we're still waiting on one or two more here. Good morning. Jory, are you counting for quorum? Uh, yeah, well, uh, well, I personally don't count for quorum, but um, we are we are yeah. keeping track of who, yes. yes. Yes, are you tracking quorum? I'm sorry. <laughs> we are. Awesome. We have uh, one third, or no, sorry, one half, sorry, of our team so far. So. All right, so we're uh, just coming up on four minutes after, so uh, we will go ahead and get started. Uh, first on today's agenda uh, is a uh, presentation and quick discussion on uh, security insights. So there was an email sent to the TAC mailing list with some detail about some work that's been going on under the uh, Identifying Security Threats Working Group. Um, so Luigi, I'll hand the floor over to you. Uh, aim for about 15 minutes if you can, please. Thank you. Hi, I can share the presentation, give one second. Um, security Site is a project by uh, the working group Identify Security Threats in Open Source Project. We start to work on it some months ago now. And uh, what is it? Uh, um, security side want to be a standard for project, not just open source, but it's of course focused on open source project that won't be, uh, give uh, basic information about the security standard of uh, a project in a, both in a human and machine readable file, so a YAML file. Um, in the open source, we have, uh, on, in the project, we have uh, a lot of way to share some security information, security.md, there is the, security policy that you can add in GitHub. Uh, there are other organizations that prefer to add just link, but we don't have uh, a standard. Um, security side want to try to be this standard, um, providing uh, uh, different information regarding the security of uh, an open source project. Uh, why? Uh, because we want to uh, reducing uh, the fragmentation of um, the information that we have related to the security in the open source. And uh, we want to offer, I mean, it's important to offer probably to 
uh, maintainers and developers uh, an easy way to provide information in a standard way, like uh, for a, just to give an example, like uh, security.txt. It is something that uh, scanner and crawler can uh, uh, scan to collect information and it is easy to uh, deploy and contain all the uh, useful information that the researcher or other developers can want, uh, want to read. Um, we have seen that scanners sometimes um, can generate false positives. It's quite common because uh, there is, uh, it's difficult to have standard and uh, this file can help to reduce um, uh, false positive. Of course, it's something that maintainers can create uh, and uh, everyone can uh, um, uh, uh, can check uh, using, I mean, by checking the source code or something similar. In addition, uh, um, this standard want to be independent by the hosting platform. At the moment, there are uh, three or I mean, three or four big platforms to um, to host for open source project like GitHub, GitLab. Mm -hmm. But uh, every platform have different API, offer different features. So uh, even if they offer now more security feature, it's not so easy to have a standard just uh, using the platform API. Uh, a similar uh, YAML file can offer to scanner a sort of standard uh, to the community sort of standard to provide security information. Uh, there are different use cases, of course. There are the final user that can find easily information. They can, uh, this file can help them. So uh, they can help a CTO, uh, CISO, or just develop in the open source to take decision about a particular project to, implement, to use or not uh, a particular third party packages. Um, scanner developer can uh, add uh, uh, this source uh, um, to the scanner or to they can create a database containing the information by this file. Security researcher can easily find information about security policy or the right way to report the vulnerabilities or bug bounty if uh, the open source project have for bug, bug bounty. And at the same time, also the maintainer can communicate better with the security researcher community. Uh, for example, giving them a right document or right policy to help them to be focused on uh, the right vulnerabilities that, that they want to receive. I am not reading the chat. If so, if someone is writing the chat, I read after the presentation. Sorry. Um, um, of course, a similar file can, um, like everything in security, uh, can lead to some uh, uh, bad scenario or critical scenario. Uh, for example, um, malicious maintainer can try to add false information um, in the repo. Uh, in the security insights repo, you can find a thread model, mm. uh, but uh, we have identified this main uh, uh, five uh, uh, malicious uh, uh, scenario, bad scenario. So supply chain, uh, if there is a link, uh, the malicious, uh, the attacker can have tried to have, uh, to obtain the, this domain, this link, uh, false information in the file, uh, um, disclosure of private uh, information for error, uh, malicious pull request to edit these files. But all these risks seems to be quite acceptable. Um, they, we already have them in a lot of standard. The main risk for this project is, uh, uh, in my opinion, a related, I mean, the main risk of failure for this project is related to the poor adoption. Um, I mean, we are, technically we are proposing a new standard. So if the community don't adopt it, there is uh, no value in this standard. We can have the best standard, but if no one use it, there is no value. And so we need to be sure that uh, um, open source project you start to adopt it. Um, and the other uh, um, risk of failure is related to the security concern. So um, according to the threat model, maybe a maintainer can decide that this standard is a risk. Um, I mean, this is definitely um, a low likelihood scenario because it is more probable that we need to convince, we need to convince. like every standard we need to we need to try to um, convince maintainer to implement or adopt it. It's not easy, it can require time. 
Um, but uh, if uh, the main open source project start to use it, probably other maintainers of the open source community just follow the main project because it is quite common and we can start to have uh, a, a good way to collect information about open source from a security perspective. So uh, what I want to ask to the tag uh, group, uh, to the tag group, well, I want to present this project. Um, and at the same time, uh, because a lot of chat. Okay. Uh, uh, at the same time, uh, um, because the main risk that uh, I see here from, for this project is that uh, the poor adoption, and uh, because uh, at the moment OpenSF seems to be quite influent, uh, both in the community, but also for uh, security people that work in the company in the enterprise world, probably a good way to spread this standard can be adopt in our uh, repo, so in our organization. So my formal request is uh, uh, if we want to proceed uh, with a similar project, uh, that can be a good idea because it is just a sort of security.txt, but for open source projects, so with more information um, and in a format that is uh, more machine readable than just the txt, uh, we should adopt in our organization. This means that uh, we should create a security insights file for the scorecard repo or for other repo that we have. And uh, at the same time, we should communicate in the right way with the community that we would like to provide this new standard just to try to aggregate information about security, about uh, project security, so that maintainers, developer, scanner, user can read them, analyze them, and uh, take the decision based on this information. And uh, that is. Uh, so, if there are any questions, um, I don't know. Please. Uh, Jeffrey? Uh, thanks for this uh, overview today. Just uh, helping my colleague uh, Arno, uh, who's uh, in a loud location, uh, he's asking to refer to this as a specification, not a standard, uh, just so we keep folks clear. And the uh, community uh, specification license uh, would be a good thing to pivot to in terms of a, uh, alignment. But I think there's merit in this. I don't think it will be easy, but I appreciate the effort that the team has put into this. Thank you. Jory, I think you're next. I think I was going to um, echo our node um, and just encourage um, more of a, you know, if this is a community driven um, project that desires to one day be a standard, um, adopting the, the community spec framework um, would be um, a great first step. And um, I would be happy to help you um, get, get started with that, that process, Luigi, if you would like. Oh yes, it would be great. I think yes, because I mean, uh, it's very. Uh, we know that the community is trying to find a way to, uh, yes, to share all the security information about the project, but it is not easy, and um, and convincing people to follow the same the same specification, the same standard, uh, the same approach, so that we can uh, at the same time have a single way to read the information and collect information it's not easy so my concern is that people can can folks still hear me i, I lost luigi yeah he's we lost luigi yeah okay all right give him a second and see if So I guess, well, he's rejoining it. The, the broader question here, I think, was one around, you know, does the TAC feel comfortable um, effectively making an ask of all um, projects within the OpenSSF to adopt this as a, almost a dog fooding exercise to, to not only demonstrate um, 
that that we're willing to hold ourselves to to our the standards that we're recommending for the broader set of ecosystems, but also uh, to help to kind of seed that uh, that flywheel effect that that it looks like Luigi and, and the team is looking to drive here. So uh, maybe a call for any input from from folks on whether that's a, a, a good idea, a bad idea. I think it would be interesting to litmus, litmus test this on other upstream communities. So, you know, if, if a community was approached and said, would you adopt this standard? And then if they were um, of the mind that, yes, this is useful, would like to implement this, then we know that it's something that's likely to be leveraged and utilized. Sorry, a blackout. Uh, can someone listen to me? Yeah, we can yes. hear you. Yeah, we can hear yeah, you. We can hear you now. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Sorry. Uh, th there is a blackout in my in my city, so I am from mobile now, and uh, I, I don't know if someone has any question because uh, I was asking to the tech group if the project seems to be reasonable and good, and uh, if, uh, in your opinion, we can try to proceed to implement this also in our organization repo and what is the best way to communicate uh, to the community about this. I mean, uh, for example, I'm working to a command line tool to validate and create this file in easy way. So we can offer also this, uh, this tool to the community. And yes, uh, I wanted just to know your opinion and sorry for this, <laughs> for the interruption. It was not planned, definitely. I mean, you don't, you don't control blackouts, I assume. Um, uh, I'm not a member of the TAC. Uh, I'm in favor of using it on open SSF repos to dog food it. I did have a question. Have you got uh, like contacts from companies like GitLab and GitHub, as well as security tool vendors involved at this stage? Uh, mm, no, at the moment, uh, uh, GitHub, GitLab are not directly involved. Um, the um, team manager of the working group, uh, uh, Michael, is by Microsoft, so he knows quite well GitHub. But um, do you think it, it would be a good idea to talk directly with GitHub and uh, GitLab uh, and other a bit back at probably also, I don't know now, what are mm -hmm. the... I, uh, off the top of my head, I can't think that they would have objections or changes, but they might. Um, they, they might have feedback, but also similarly with uh, security vendors, security tool vendors, they might have particular fields that they want to look for that they find difficult to extract at the moment. Um, so they might have feedback too. It, it looks pretty complete, but my background in like agile software consulting uh, mm -hmm. is talked talk to the end user as much as you can. Okay, um, two quick question. I can contact, I mean, um, probably we have people in uh, directly in our OpenSSF Slack that work uh, in this company. So I can contact using uh, the OpenSSF Slack uh, or I can contact them as an OpenSSF member just to have to try to receive feedback about this uh, standard, for example, uh, of course, it is uh, this. this I say standard, but we can say specification. Or, but um, of course, uh, when uh, we started to work on it, uh, uh, we have thought about uh, uh, OpenSSF scorecard. So technically, scorecard can be uh, um, can support this file just scanning it. But uh, also, other scanner, I think, sneak or other can uh, uh, collect information from the same uh, file. So technically it's not just for a single tool. It's something that can be uh, used from uh, every scanner, also from new scanners that open the community can create. So, uh, but yes, um, I will, um, I appreciate uh, uh, if uh, uh, people from GitHub or GitLab or, or similar company can provide feedback, definitely. So I try to contact them to continue to collect feedback and I will provide to a first tool to, uh, to validate the, the YAML. And if there are no other objection and I can continue, we can continue to work on it. For me, it's perfect. Um, 
uh, yes, and definitely the communication will be an important key of the result of the project, probably. Yeah, I think we have two other quick questions. Um, one from Vicky first. Hey, um, so again, not a tech member. Um, so, uh, but I uh, do have some feedback. I, I do think it's worthwhile to at least have a proof of concept within uh, the OpenSSF bubble to see how this works, um, see whether it works for us, and uh, most importantly, see what's required to implement it and how hard it is for people to do so. Um, so I do uh, encourage the TAC to uh, support that, if only in, at first, a limited version, and then perhaps rolling it out more. Um, I uh, strongly encourage uh, the switch uh, mental and otherwise from standard to specification. I think that's rather important and I'm glad that Arno brought it up. Um, I believe Arno brought it up, if, if not apologies to whomever did. Um, I, I think that's going to be very important uh, as a mindset to make sure that going forward, we can all kind of uh, coalesce around that and help support it as a specification. I think that's going to improve your messaging considerably when you're speaking with these other groups. Um, so uh, that's certainly worthwhile. And um, as Jacques mentioned, uh, this should be run past some end users rather than simply the TAC. Some of the um, groups that will be implement implement implementing, no, implementing um, this to make sure it's, uh, is something that they can support because that will gain adoption if you're able to get a GitHub, a GitLab to yes, implementify. Thank you, Jory. Um, uh, if you're able to get them to get behind you on this and have blog posts and various things like this is now a best practice, I think that will be uh, very, very useful. But um, I want to call attention to something that Josh mentioned or uh, question he had, which is how many people are maintaining this? Is it simply a you or because I've seen this demo like four times now, and it's only been you. So I would love to know along with Josh how how sustainable this project is right now. I mean, uh, it is a good question. And uh, especially about uh, uh, how many people work on it. Technically, uh, I am uh, the person that for sure worked more on this project. But it was part of uh, my working group. So every two weeks, uh, I collect feedback and there is help from my working group. Um, if we want to spread and be sure that people can adopt it, uh, for sure we need to define some rules, for example, how we should uh, uh, deploy a new version of the standard, how we add a uh, new section of properties in the schema, and uh, so uh, a specification should have a, a, a sort of group of people that can maintain it. Um, I think that OpenSSF is the right group, especially because the idea is that uh, uh, this schema, this specification should be um, easy to be maintained over time. We can just add or remove uh, uh, properties according to how the open source community and the security world uh, uh, continue to grow. So if there are a new standard over here, we can add the property for this uh, uh, standard, for example, I don't know, a new file uh, uh, markdown that contain particular information. Uh, this bomb file that now is uh, contain that's a lot of uh, company and projects uh, are adding to their repo. And um, uh, I think that this is a good question because at the moment there is not a document, I hope you can listen to me. Uh, there is no document that formalizes how we should improve it, but it's something that is on the roadmap. And um, All right, so I think, uh, Luigi, we have time for one more question from Josh, and then unfortunately we have other things on the agenda that we'll need to go through. OK, in case Josh. you can write. Yeah, yeah. I don't have a question. I just have a oh, OK, sorry. Like, we're, we're way out of time, and that was the first thing I was going to say. And like, this is neat, but I don't, to understand why we're necessarily having this discussion right now. I mean, this feels like something, make it a project, get it in use. Like you're already part of a working group, you know, like just keep, keep shepherding it along. That's how this is supposed to work. I don't see what else we can do at this point other than gain some adoption, get some insights, get some co-developers and then make it a thing, right? 
<laughs> yes, <laughs> I agree. I mean, if yes, okay. I mean, that's it. I, like, we don't have magic powers. Like, if you want to do this, like, do it, and you are, and that's great. But I think having a working group for it makes perfect sense, and I don't, I don't think there's a lot for the TAC to do outside of that at the moment. So summarizing the feedback, I, I think, you know, we, we certainly are encouraging on the concept, and, and if there are, are places that we can drive uh, awareness and outreach, I think Alpha Omega was mentioned as a potential vehicle to, to get additional feedback to this. Um, I think it makes sense uh, to, to support the project in that way. I think we need to make sure that you're not the only <laughs> person here, and, and not not just from a you know a, a horsepower perspective, but also to make sure that we're we're pushing projects that have the correct level of health and diversity out. And when we do make recommendations, that they, they meet that bar. Um, so if, I think we can take the rest of this discussion offline. But in general, um, you know, it, it sounds like great idea. Something you know. Still in its early stages, but uh, you know, as we see more and more adoption, I think it's uh, appropriate to uh, to come back if you have explicit asks of things that you need help with. Um, we we'll certainly encourage that. All right, yes, I mean for the presentation. Okay, thank you. Uh, yes, I wanted just to present the project and ask to OpenSSF uh, to adopt it um, in the future because I mean, if we want to continue with this specification, I think that uh, OpenSSF should adopt for their own repo. Otherwise, the community cannot follow us for sure. Uh, just this, and every feedback is always welcome. And thank you for the time. Thank you. All right, next on the agenda, I just threw this on here just so it was fresh on our minds. Uh, just a quick retrospective um, you know, from, from all attendees that, that were able to join uh, either in person or virtually to the OpenSSF day last week. Um, you know, I think in chatting with Brian and, and uh, Jory afterwards, I think, you know, not to lead the witness, but I think most folks thought it was a, a, a pretty good day uh, in terms of content and flow uh, and engagement. Um, but I did want to have uh, just a brief section here to call out as we think about doing this uh, more often and the next uh, kind of uh, event that would be triggered here would be the, the OSS Summit in Dublin coming up in September. Uh, any quick feedback from folks on, on the call around Things that we would like to see more of, things that we would like to not see repeated, or anything that could be uh, uh, you know, any kind of other, under, yeah, can't talk to <laughs> any other <laughs> constructive feedback that folks want to offer uh, would be appreciated. And, and really quick, we had 359 people attend in person at some point, specifically to Open SSF Day, because uh, we were badging people in at the beginning of the day and and through um, some other. <laughs> Sorry. Some, some other parts later, um, and had 498 people participate virtually, uh, just watching the live stream. Um, we'll put up the, the streams uh, on YouTube sometime in the next two weeks. Uh, and there's a Flickr stream of photos from the whole of the event uh, here, but there include a, a couple of photos from OpenSSF Day. So um, just by the numbers and, and raw data, but certainly interested in feedback. I think one of the things <clears throat> from a moment of feedback, I think one of the things we should look at is who do we expect the audience to be in that room and try to um, hit a more breadth of content to address more people who might be brand new to OpenSSF um, or those who are completely inside baseball because I had some feedback from people that, that felt it was a little, um, a little bit more challenged to bring content to clear points because we don't quite know what we're doing in a lot of these spots. We're trying things, but we also need to balance that with how does how does this look if somebody is just showing up to say what is going on here? And it felt so it felt a little bit squishy to some of those people for me. And they're like, "Do you all have a plan?" And I'm like, "Yes, yes, we're working on a plan. That's that's the plan." Um, so I think we should try to tighten this up just a little bit if we can for content uh, to address the audiences that we think we'll have, which of course is a a um, random <laughs> is a random crapshoot anyway because it's the audience. Uh, I was just going to say one of the bits of analysis we want to do is to take that list of attendees, the folks we scanned in, and see okay, how many of these folks are folks who've already been coming to our working group sessions, or you know they've been they're in our Slack channel, they're in some way, shape, or form. Um, already connected to the community versus folks who have who were seeing us for the first time um, at the summit. And um, what, one of the hypotheses we had coming in was that we would see more of the latter, more people who weren't already familiar with us. Anecdotally, 
it didn't feel that way in the room um, on on Monday. So looking at sort of the, the data and the demographics of the group is one of the things I think we'll do to really um, inform how how we shift the content for next time. Because while I'm sure everyone here enjoyed uh, who, who was there was was able to enjoy the sessions, it probably much of it was probably not new news for, for you, uh, for you old timers uh, in the community. And uh, we want to make sure there's also useful materials for our uh, community there too. Sorry, that would be great analysis to have. All right, any other points of feedback before we move on? Take that as a no. All right, thanks all. Um, I'm going to switch the agenda items real quick, the, the last two here, just because I think it will just knock the short one out first and then go into the broader discussion. Um, just wanted to follow up on a couple of action, couple action items that we had from before. Um, uh, one is a continued call for reviews to the outstanding PRs that we have on the working branch for uh, the proposed governance and project uh, lifecycle models. Uh, there's a couple that are open here uh, that I think we're, we're ready to get additional feedback and then uh, continue to make progress on there. So uh, just a, a call for TAC members to go take a, an explicit look and if others want to chime in, that's certainly welcome. Uh, and then lastly, I think uh, whether it was Jen or Jory, I don't quite recall. So apologies if I'm pointing this at the, <laughs> at the wrong person, but uh, I believe somebody took an action item to set up a regular reporting cadence from both the projects and working groups uh, into the TAC. Wasn't sure if there was an update on that that you could briefly share with this is Jen. I don't have an update. Um, I was out the uh, week in between the two, the, the last call, um, but I will have an update for y'all um, shortly on that and can work on that this week. Great. All right. Thank you. Um, so, Brian, I know you had sent a note to the, uh, uh, the TAC around the mobilization plan thoughts. Do you want to? Yeah, and I just dropped the link again in uh, the chat here. And and um, I, I know you all hate me dropping a, a, a link to a long document right during a call. So I uh, am I, I apologize for that, and I don't mean to in, you know take up uh, too much time here in kind of conversation over things that you haven't read. Uh, <coughs> but uh, in following up on the development of the mobilization plan, I knew it was pretty important to find uh, an appropriate way to structure. The follow-ups uh, putting together to to try to direct uh, the the offers of funding towards uh, uh, towards different targets that that we set in the mobilization plan. Um, I've been cautious about this because I have seen open source projects ruined by by money. The the more money, more problems uh, kind of thing is very real. You know when uh, people conflate the governance of a technology project with the management of a budget to spend on things and and things get funded that don't meet the quality standards and that kind of thing. So um, uh, it felt to me like one of the things that did work about the mobile plan was the way we pulled together small teams around each stream kind of gave them the uh, <coughs> apologies <coughs> independence to figure out the right approach uh, 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 and uh, uh, you know kind of orthogonal to each other uh, uh, and so what I've proposed here and this is after lots of conversations with some of you with governing board members with others about the right way to structure this is um, uh, continuing that kind of per stream small team uh, structure making it public this time we were uh, only kind of semi public before because we were trying to rush against a deadline uh, and and um, and I think we now have the affordance to be able to have these uh, public ongoing kind of I uh, uh, you know kind of persistent you know as long as there there's a plan as long as there's streams and, and funding to pursue I think we can structure this uh, and these uh, small teams, these SIGs would uh, sit underneath um, a working group that would adopt them. I proposed a set of mappings there uh, between stream uh, themes and working groups. That is a proposal. That's not an assignment. Um, I, each working group should decide if that's what they'd like to take on in terms of oversight. Um, uh, and then that SIG would continue to evolve the stream uh, and then identify opportunities for funding. Basically, uh, here's a proposal to uh, you know, hire a person as a DevRel advocate for six months or something like that, or here's a, you know, a, another group that'll write code or, or, or to set up something larger, right? Uh, to work with an outside firm, to work with uh, LFX uh, security, for example, for stream number two. Uh, but it would be the stream that kind of tees these opportunities up and then uh, turns to what would be created as a subcommittee of the governing board 
uh, uh, focused on the mobilization plan, bringing together those organizations that have pledged $30 million against that uh, in a, uh, to tee up these proposals on a kind of a regular once every either two week or four week uh, kind of meeting uh, to say, okay, stream number three is proposing this, this chunk of work. Um, they need 100K for it or 500K for it. Um, it could be big or small granularity. I, th I would suggest starting, starting small as, as, as always. Um, and then they, they, you know, uh, and then we kind of say, are we ready to fund this and, and to move forward? And then the LF staff kind of help manage the collection of the payments and the dispersion uh, of that out. Um, uh, in some cases, in other cases, we might simply direct those funders directly to a third party like Ostiff or whatever. So I know it's a long document. Um, it's not that long, actually. Lots of white space in it, 10 pages. Um, I did try to anticipate or, or address many of the concerns people had shared with me in that. So that's why it's on the longest side. Um, what uh, I'm also share, I'm also sharing this with the governing board uh, and having some uh, we'll have some conversations uh, kind of with them as well about their comfort level with the approach uh, and uh, and the, does that give them the right degree of, of oversight? But you know, repeatedly they say we really depend upon the TAC to tell us whether these ideas are are good ideas or not. So um, uh, what I'm trying to avoid is necessarily pushing everything through a small a small funnel, which is our, our once every two week call here and try to figure out the right balancing act between uh, oversight and uh, and governance and simply agility. Anybody who's put together a funding plan for things and taken it that mile to, to getting people to actually write checks knows how sometimes delicate that delicate that process can be operating in the public only makes it more delicate. But I think I think what I've, we've got here is a balance between between all those factors. So um, but certainly happy to take comment. And I'd love to see this be something the TAC as, a, as an overall plan felt comfortable enough with to to endorse. Not today, but at some point in the next uh, couple of meetings. I dig it. Thanks, Brian. Don't, don't feel bad about 10 pages, mate. I wrote 29 pages on CVSS. You're doing fine. No, I think one, one, one open question that I cite towards the end are concerns about, you know, what's the right degree of bureaucracy <laughs> to have in this? You know, um, having the SIGs parked under the working groups is my attempt to try to disaggregate or, or decentralize a bit without taking away anything from the tax ability to kind of provide that oversight. Um, uh, but uh, but arguably, you could also have these SIGs report directly to the TAC. Uh, I just um, I feel like with the one hour every two weeks we have here is pretty precious. And so wanted to, to just be efficient with that. And some working groups are more um, active than others are. So there might be a good reason for perhaps a mix of some of these uh, stream SIGs, as I'm calling them, reporting directly to the TAC versus others. But I, I think there's something really powerful and good about the fact that we have these working groups as like the main way to fan out and delegate out uh, responsibility in the organization and we put thematically related things together and domain experts together and so this tries to take advantage of that uh now more formally um do we have some some mechanism for tracking commitments of uh like time commitments of, of staff time so I addressed this in the proposal. Um, I, I think uh, it's very important to distinguish between volunteers who, you know, every stream should be set up in such a way that the work happens publicly enough that it can tap into volunteers who can show up opportunistically, participate a lot, a little, you know, but in a way that we're not hinging critical things on them, distinguishing between that and committed resources, whether voluntary or maybe we have to pay partly for them, who could say, okay, for six months, you'll be 20 hours a week on an essential project management kind of function here or domain expert kind of function there, or you'll build this thing, right? That's that's more committed resources. And certainly if organizations stepped up and said, we're willing to put this person 20 hours a week, 40 hours a week, whatever, on this task, that could be a part of the funding proposal. It might even be enough that you don't need any funding to get started on something, which would be awesome, right? No one has to wait uh, uh, to make progress on that. Somebody doing that though should just work directly with like, if it's funding for SIGStore, like don't even worry about like a proposal around that, just go volunteer on SIGStore, right? But, um, but I would lean on the stream SIGs to come up with proposals that might be a mix of, we need some cash, we need some people, um, uh, and, uh, and, and we'll help them connect them to the people who might, organizations might have people to offer in those capacities, but, uh, but it's delicate to do right.
I guess I'm next. So I guess the, the part that I'm, I, I guess gets fuzzy for me is exactly where the, the line is drawn between dedicated funds for the mobilization plan versus generic foundation funds that are available to delegation to the individual working groups on their normal operating basis and what role the TAC fundamentally plays in one set of funding versus the other. Um, so I guess trying to minimize bureaucracy and I'm certainly a fan of that, but given the flexibility that fundamentally exists here, I think that's where it breeds a set of confusion in my mind in terms of when do we map the correct level of governance and oversight based on the funding source. So I'll, right. I'll certainly take a, a, re, a, a further read through the document with that lens, but I guess that's, that's the thing I'm struggling most with at this point. Yeah, and I think um, one of the things that we haven't done enough of this this past year, and I'll take take some blame for that, is you know we have about a million and a half that has been earmarked from the current Open SSF core budget for some of the kinds of work that we've done, funding the scorecard work, funding uh, further development of the educational materials like setting up SCORM Connect, funding for uh, uh, other things that are more are more core. And I've always seen it separate from the mobilization plan, but obviously can be additive to open SSF efforts in the same way the mobilization plan can be. Um, I'm putting together an updated budget for the second half of the year to the governing board um, uh, to update kind of levels in those commits based on the fact we have some more members now and we can spend some more money. Uh, and I see that potentially well as, as being separate from these stream SIGs and from the funding process, um, uh, and being more about, say, the projects coming directly to working groups of the TAC going, hey, we could use, we use some funding for this or that. Um, but I, I, I think I get, I, I can get you a better answer on that. And, and, and I owe certainly the governing board a better answer on that um, and look at some funding we can distribute from the core budget for, for some other things that projects need. Got it, thanks. I, I've had to switch to my cell, so I'll have to ask uh, Jory maybe to, to figure out who's next on question on the question queue, please. That would be Sarah Novotny. Yeah, my, my question or <clears throat> general comment on this as we bring in both the um, project level governance that's been being worked on by the TAC as well as this mobilization stream plan. And there's a question in the stream plan from Dan about is siftifying that's actually on me at the moment. Um, I have offered a draft or I have planned to offer a draft which I have not yet offered. So I will offer a draft in the next week and we will um, be able to talk through all of these different structures, but I wanna be really careful that we're not adding structures and weird new ways to, to do work that make this more complicated and we end up spending more time in the governance and the surprising people in the project as opposed to having a nice pattern and knowing how we do this. So I just want us to keep an eye toward that um, as opposed to rebuilding, um, rebuilding and building a whole uh, new set of structures um, that are different from other Linux Foundation projects, et cetera. So we have some, some pretty common patterns. Let's use them where we can. I totally agree with that. That's why I, I opted, uh, you know, uh, tried to adopt the, the SIG structure under working groups as like the, the vehicle for, for, you know, developing the plans further and developing proposals. Um, the one new committee that's created as a, as a committee of the governing board, which is what a couple of governing board members have asked for, uh, which is one focus on the mobilization plan. Um, I had raised my hand um, just to respond to Sarah. Sarah, I had uh, started a document to help internally the teams, um, legal finance uh, project teams, um, kind of align on language about what is a SIF. Um, I'd love to work with you and, and sh share share that uh, documentation with you as, as you kind of consider how you want to define it externally. Unfortunately, the concept of, of the SIF was sort of a back of the house thing that, that leaked in the front. Um, and so I'd like to share share where, where we got uh, internally with you so we can align. That's all. That would be awesome. It would be very helpful to have that. And and then also we can just negotiate back and forth. Cause I agree it's a weird, it's a weird structure that somehow leaked to the front of the house. And now it's, you know, now it's taking on a life of its own. So totally get it.
I don't see any other questions, um, which again, I, I, it's bringing this document on you in real, real time, I understand, but um, uh, hopefully we could have uh, um, some more conversation about this over the next few weeks and uh, a conversation at the next TAC call potentially about, are we close? Is it is it something that we're all comfortable with here? And in parallel uh, as well with the governing board kind of on the same time frame. Um, so totally open to comments. I will monitor um, the hashtag TAC on uh, Slack for, for comments on this as well. Uh, and uh, uh, and yeah, and, and I do think it's important for us to clarify kind of where we're thinking now, the how the SIFs operationally, both back end and front end, relate to uh, uh, the OpenSSF TAC and governing board. As a part of answering this question, I don't mean to overly kind of segment, but um, but yeah, I feel like it's, a, it's an important issue to also make progress on. Any other questions? Brian, just one, one last word for me in terms of the next steps. Uh, I know you, you said that you're going to take this to the GB meeting, which I believe is next Thursday, if I've got my calendar right in my head. Um, so the, the question I have is, are, are you going to socialize that for feedback from the GB? Or are you asking for a, an approval from the GB on, on this concept to have this be the action plan? Uh, I just want to make sure that folks on the call have clarity in terms of the sequencing here. Yeah, um, yeah. I'll be posting it today. Two things to the governing board. One is um, we're actually going to move the next call to be um, not a call, but so much a series of conversations over email. It looked like there were quite a few people who are going to be offline next week for the July 4th holiday. So I, I will be posting this proposal to them as well for their feedback and comment on the same document. Uh, and and hopefully, not, obviously not by next week, getting a consent from them or convergence, but um, uh, hopefully over the over the next few weeks uh, on the same time frame as the the TAC here, getting agreement this makes sense. And then the one action for them to take, if that makes sense, is uh, setting up the committee for the mobilization plan. Uh, and and that's really the the what <laughs> Crow was calling Shark Tank, which I did not want to commit to paper, um, but uh, uh, is an interesting way of thinking about the structure of those meetings. Basically, proposals and are we ready to fund these or not? Got it. All right. Well, then uh, at our next TAC call uh, in two weeks, um, I'll commit to bringing back uh, a kind of a current state of. Uh, the feedback that I've seen from the governing board members and Brian, I'm sure if you're here, you can certainly weigh in as well, just to kind of give an update, but um, that, that certainly sounds good to me. So. Great, All right, uh, any other any other topics uh, folks want to discuss uh, for today's call? All right, well, I guess so. Uh, there's nobody else that uh, has anything we can go ahead and close early. So thanks, everybody. Talk to you soon. Thanks, all. Stop recording.